You're listening to the Geekscape Network. Time to fire up the VCR. This one's my favorite. Analog Jones in the Temple of Film. I'm Steve. And I'm Matt. And this week we're going into our third film of the Amityville Horror franchise. And this one's a pretty easy title. We never heard this in the 80s. Amityville 3D. The whole world knows the story of this house. <gasps> now its terror takes on a new dimension. As the horror reaches out beyond the edge of the screen, get out! Everybody get out of the house! Dino De Laurentiis presents Amityville 3D. The, the the spook is in in your face this time. The ghosties are coming for you. Yeah, and, and you know what? There was so much coming at me. I feel like we need some help to like grab on to all this completely realistic 3D. So I think we're going to ask the Jersey Ghouls. Welcome, Yay. Marissa and Jackie. How are you two doing? Oh, dancing. <laughs> She's, <laughs> dancing. She's so excited. She's dancing. No, we're doing good. That's awesome. I, I love that you came for, uh, you know, rocking out in October. We're doing a franchise. Have either of you two seen this movie? No, I have to be honest, and I may lose some street cred here. I've only ever watched the first one before we, we set out to, to tackle this series. I've never seen it, but I remember the VHS cover of this one walking down my local, you know, video store. And I remember being kind of freaked out because it's that kind of gremlin hand coming at you. And that kind of wigged me out. So I remember the box art, but I have, this is my first time seeing it. Yeah, don't worry, Marissa. Um, you're not going to lose street cred on not seeing the Amityville franchise. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you don't know the circles I roll in. <laughs> uh, yeah, because I hadn't seen hardly any of this franchise before we did this. And that's part of why, you know, when Matt's like, let's do this franchise. I was like, game. Plus, <laughs> him, him and I have been collecting them. They're, some of them are tough to find. Uh, Matt, how about you? I had seen this one, actually. And it, it's uh, very much to the point of that, that cover. That VHS cover got me. I, I think I rented this one before I saw any of the other ones, to be honest. And I think it's because of the cover of, like, the monster hand reaching out. I would, that That's right up my alley. So, like, I, I this one caught me at a very early age. But, I, like I said, I think it's the first one I saw of the series based solely on judging the book on its cover. <laughs> wow. Yeah, so, Jackie, uh, kind of, like, piggyback off yours. I kind of thought this was a ghoulies thing. When I was a kid, like with a gremlin hand. Mm -hmm. So, and then when you, when you go to the back, I was like, I would always tell my brothers, I was like, I guarantee you it's like ghoulies, man. But we never rented it. Did you ever have a VHS where you're like, I always want to rent this, but somehow you always get talked out of it or you never pick it up on that weekend? Oh yeah. What is it? It's the one with um Jennifer Conley with all the bugs. The VHS cover, she's got, like, all the bugs in her hand and, like, on her face. It, phenomena or creepers. I just remember, like, all the bugs, and I was like, dude, that looks cool. I should rent it. And it just, like, there was always something else. Like, I, I think I just had to rent, like, Monster Squad for, like, the like 38th <laughs> time. I'm pretty sure it's an Italian movie. I've seen it. I can't remember. It's an Italian movie, right, Matt? Yeah, it's an Argento movie uh, from, like, 86. It Yeah, it had two titles, so I don't know which. Both of them had that. Uh, image with their hand reaching out with all the bugs so it's a really cool poster mm -hmm. speaking of italian mine was a giallo film the demons cover scared the shit out of me as a kid oh yeah 
But like by design, I didn't rent it because I was like, I'm too scared. <laughs> like, oh, <hell> no. <laughs> there were so many movies in the 80s I didn't rent because the cover scared me too bad. <laughs> well, I'm trying to think. I think it was Demons and also there was another one where my parents, my parents had a weird philosophy of letting us rent horror films because when they finally broke, they're like, Jesus Christ, four boys asking for horror films. They just, like, they gave up. <laughs> You know, I mean, they barely, I'm, I'm sure, I would hope somehow my parents figured out how not to go bald because, you know, you've got four kids like, can we get this, this, and this? And they're just pulling out their hair. They always had a weird philosophy with certain movies they wouldn't rent for us. And I remember, I yeah, I think Demons was definitely one because I remember that. And they would, my mom would not rent Dead Alive for us. Because of the cover? Because of the cover. Wow. Yeah. Cover was creepy. And she also wouldn't rent the one with ants, where it was the girl with all the cleavage and all the ants crawling on it. <laughs> I don't remember no. that. My mom's like, that's a porno. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, uh, what guy's getting his rocks off with ants on boobs? That's a weird subgenre right there. <laughs> okay, so uh, <laughs> if we're walking down the aisle, uh, I'm going to describe here. Maybe, Matt, you can help me too. Um, and we've kind of already talked about it. We've got a giant grimly hand. Popping out of the, the first floor window, coming to grab you. I mean, spooky, scary. I'm frightened. And, and you've got the tagline of uh, warning in this movie, you are the victim. So now it's like, oh, I'm involved. <laughs> oh, really? That's your tagline? Mine yeah. underneath is home video version, not in 3D. <laughs> oh, weird. Aww. My version says prepared to be totally underwhelmed. That's <laughs> <sad. laughs> wow. super weird. They need, they need to work on these subtitles. <laughs> uh, yeah, we just get, I, I get a bunch of words underneath mine, you know, saying who's in it, directed it, wrote it, and all that good stuff with a big sticker that says 3D rental. I mean, three day rental, damn it. <laughs> they, they got me. You are the victim. Uh, yeah, and it also has the classic green horror sticker on it, which I love. Oh, I love when, yeah, they have mm -hmm. those on there. So it's an Orion and uh, Vestron vehicle here uh you remember vestron don't you uh matt oh yeah I, that was probably another reason that uh i picked this movie up before i rented any of the other ones the the great cover of the hand and the fact that it was from like the company that was putting out all like the charlie band movies and stuff like that i was like i was like oh yeah i'm gonna like this so <laughs> this was uh this was a must rent for me yeah didn't vestron like really hit the market big with dirty dancing mm-hmm yep I'm looking at that VHS right now. <laughs> it just happens to be in front of me. All right. So I'll read, uh, flip it over here to the back. And we get, well, I get the most evil house on earth, dot, dot, dot. And it's legacy of horror. And we got the production still of the demon alien coming out of the well. I What is that? Is it a demon? I have so many questions about the well. It, it's, it's, the, <laughs> it's the demon, because that's the other subtitle for the movie. <laughs> that is the the titular, the demon. It looks like an alien, though. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I, thought, I thought I went straight gremlins with that hand. <laughs> I think they failed in one aspect is we don't know what it is. <laughs> Everyone's got a different answer. Uh, but the, uh, the description here is, or the you know synopsis of the film, the infamous... Amityville House, site of the hit thrillers The Amityville Horror and Amityville 2 The Possession, is once again the centerpiece of terror and horror-filled Amityville 3D, featuring extraordinary special effects by the team who created Poltergeist. Oh, there you go. There's good marketing. Stick in Poltergeist. That works. Tony Roberts, Annie Hall, and Tess Harper from Tender uh, Mercies star in the chilling journey into the supernatural. As a journalist and his wife who buy the beautiful Amityville house as a cheap investment, but strange occurrences begin right away, threatening the couple, the children, their friends, and the mysterious realtor who sold them the house. The terror builds and builds until a group of scientists begin to probe the house and discover the horrific answer to the mansion's dark secret. Wow, you got a lot of problems inside the synopsis, like it's not correct. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I'm like, he didn't buy it with his wife. That was his ex-wife. Yeah. He wanted nothing to do with the fucking house. <laughs> and then the mysterious realtor? No, it was some fat dude who's like, I don't want this, I just bought it. I was just going to say, I didn't think there was much mystery there. <laughs> no. 
<laughs> it just cracks me up because my note also references M as the fat guy and not the realtor. That's I hope to yeah. be billed that way. <laughs> you know, he's like the fat cat. That's actually what I wrote down. I was like, oh, the fat cat owned the house and he died in it. That makes sense. No, I straight up the fat guy. I, <laughs> I go ahead and weight shame him. That's what we do here. We body shame. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> and it's okay that I do it because I'd be billed as the fat girl. Yeah, so seriously, I know. I'm like, I can do it. I'm allowed to call other people fat. So <laughs> Before we pop it in and talk about it and everything, I will say the beginning of this, I think is clever because they subverted my expectations of what this was. Because at first, when we get this family or we get these, this couple doing this whole psychic thing, I was like, oh my God, this is awful. Really? And then it's, and then they get you. And then it's, uh, you've, you've been swindled as well. Well, since I am a skeptic, the haunted houses and everything, you know, and all that good stuff, ghosts and whatnot. I, that's, I think why I liked it right away. This beginning part. anyway. I didn't fully understand in the beginning that it like was a rented house because when all this shit went down and then like the two old people just leave. I was like, why Why would they leave? I'm like, why wouldn't the other people go? Like, why did the old people leave? I'm like, oh, it's a rented house. No, I did. I, I'm kind of in the same boat as, as as a skeptic. So the whole almost like Harry Houdini, like debunking <laughs> thing was really cool. Yeah, we talked in the previous uh, Amityville's that like I'm more the skeptic. And that's why like, you know, haunted houses to me don't make. <sighs> I'm not a big haunted house. Um, like, I love haunted houses. I just don't like haunted House movies, mostly? Huh. I don't know. We, you know, Jackie's a skeptic. How about you, Marissa? So I'm a total sucker and a believer. And so I think that's why we make good partners. Because I'm like, I assume everything's haunted. Like, whether it be at home, a lamp, a pen, yeah. anything. And, and I don't believe in ghosts. So okay. it, it works out. Although I'm, I'm kind of the opposite of you, Steve, where I don't believe. But at the same time, I'm very entertained by the notion of ghosts. So I will always go into the haunted house movies. I will go into like the haunted house attractions. I have books on my bookshelves all about ghosts and hauntings, but that's just because it's an entertaining topic for me. But yeah, I'm, I'm the skeptic and, and she's my believer. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, Matt and I are a little bit split on it too. He, he has never had something like that, but you're more like, eh, shit can be possessed or haunted. Right. Yeah. I'm more of the, of the, I don't believe, but I'm still cautious because you never know. Um, so I and then and that's and because I never know, and I guess I don't fully commit to not believing in that regard. Uh, then it, all of this stuff scares the shit out of me. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, same. I'm always like, well, I can't say it's definitely not true, so I'm just gonna be scared just to be safe. <laughs> yes, that is where I'm at. That's exactly my position here. Yeah, we have a nice sprinkling of beliefs going around here. <laughs> that's right. Nice. It's fun. So let's pop this tape in. And now. Our feature presentation. No trailers. Blech. I hate it. It's still too early. It's too soon still. They're coming. Don't you worry. We got plenty of vid marks to go later in this series. We'll be good. <laughs> yeah, this is an older one, too. This is an 84 Vestron. Wow. It's weird because, like, I, one thing, too, I always feel like these later Amityvilles are so much later than they were. They all came out pretty quick after each other. Like I was like shocked that they like they like they were all still in the eighties. Yeah, in seventy nine you had the first one, eighty two yeah. the second one, eighty three this one. Yeah. We actually have a large gap between three and four. Yeah, like five years, right? Yeah, it's like eight eighty nine is uh yeah, mm -hmm. is four. So yeah, so we get we get a few years in between, but still in the eighties. So like yeah. we got four or three three movies in the eighties and then the first one in the seventies, so um, and then, of course, we get the wild, wild 90s later in the series when we get into the cursed <laughs> objects section of the series. <laughs> and so this came out 13 months after the second one in November. The second one came out in September. So, okay, 14 months. 14 yeah. months after. Does this feel rushed to anyone? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Right? I didn't think so. Oh. I... It doesn't feel super rushed to me. It just feels super different than the other two. Yeah, see, I, I'm, I'm kind of going more in the jack. I was like, this kind of feels like a structured story someone was working on, but this is the first one not based on a book. So one, I tricked, I tricked Marissa, nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was rushed. No, see, my my whole thought of it not being rushed is more okay. And and full disclosure, like the the kind of movie like this is 
just how also like with Jason 3D, like how you do the effect where you put an object, you know, very close to the camera. You're doing the whole 3D shtick. Like I'm the target audience for that. Like so I it. eat that stuff up. I love it. So for me, this doesn't feel rushed because you have to go in with a forethought of like, what can we, what can we put in front of the camera? What can we do that doesn't seem like super outlandish like i felt like all of their little gimmicky like 3d moments like they all seem to fit like in the very beginning with the branch in the wind okay you can roll your eyes all you want like what, what 3d movie are you fucking making right <laughs> <laughs> i just feel like it <laughs> i just feel like it, it seems very planned i thought they were all well thought out little gimmicks with the 3d stuff I like the 3D stuff too. I, you know, it just, it adds a level of like charm to it later. And yeah, it might be a little dorky, you know, with like the, the like the pull when she gets in the accident and stuff like that. And, you know, it, nowadays with it not in 3D, it, it's a little cheesy, but whatever, man. Like I really like it. I, I think it's just charming. It's, it's dorky charming. Well, here's my full perspective. I thought their 3D gimmicks were well thought out, but. At the same time, I think the 3D gimmick is dumb. Thank you. Right. <laughs> like, there's only so much you can do. I'm really glad somebody said it, though, who wasn't me. Because Jackie's already over here like, like, netty, netty, boo-boo, because she wins. <laughs> but for, am I going to be the only, like, let's, can we talk about the elephant in the room in that 3D fucking sucks? <laughs> yeah, well, okay, so in, like, 81 through 83, like, 3D was, it just went off the rails. We had coming <laughs> at ya in 81, mm -hmm. Friday the 13th part 3 in 82. First of all, I always thought Friday the 13th was called 3D. Friday the 13th 3D. It's not. Okay, it's just part 3, which it, it's part 3 in 3D. Yes. So, I don't know, just something for the nerds out there. You know why? Because they were, it was classy like that. They were, like, we're not going to hit you on the head with it. We're, yeah. we're a classy. We're going to let you figure that out. Here are your glasses. <laughs> we're, and then, we're a classy yeah. series. You're talking to the girl that also loves the 3D ending of Freddy's Dead, The Final Nightmare. You were so With, like, his little, like, the Freddy on. sperm yeah. heads, oh, like, Jesus going Christ. around the screen. Yeah. So, again, I'm the target audience. I'm here for the gimmick. Yeah, I mean, and I'm glad you called it sperm because that's exactly what it is. <laughs> yeah, no, Freddie had sperms. <laughs> she loves a, a good William Castle gag, too. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, you're like the William Castle fan. You, you'd be like, hell yeah, buzzers under the seats, I'm gay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we had Parasite in 82, Amityville 3D in 83. Listen to all these 83 films. This is absurd. Amityville 3D, 83, Jaws 3D, 83, uh, Metal Storm, The Destruction of Jared Son, 83. That is a sci-fi film I've never seen. I have seen Space Hunter, Adventures in the Forbidden Zone. That was 3D. And then we have Treasure of the Four Crowns, 3D, in 1983. I just figured out saying 3D and then 83 is really confusing in my brain. <laughs> and there's three part threes that are in 3D. So <laughs> you've got that as well. Uh, you guys know what would be a great idea? Are you going to say uh, number three in 3D? N no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, that's what I was going to do, but um, I hate you, Jeff. <laughs> it's always that damn Jeff. And, and the other thing I want to say about this movie is there was a genuine moment of scare for me because this movie showed one of my very real fears, which is my fear of elevators. Oh God, I was so afraid you were gonna say my fear of flies. And I was no. like, I fucking am so over the flies in this film. Seriously. No, no, I have a fear of riding in elevators and this movie tells you exactly why. Cause if I get into an elevator, Shit's it's gonna do exactly what happened to that guy, <laughs> which is why I take the stairs all the time. Yeah, but what about skyscrapers? She just avoids them. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> if I can, no, I seriously, I've talked about it on our show. Like, there's a, a law firm that I have to go to a lot for my job, and I walk up seven flights of stairs because I do not like their rickety ass scary elevator. Oh, one of my favorite games to play at work is will the elevator break down and I'll be in here all day instead of at my <laughs> desk because it would be a market improvement as a teacher on my day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. Oh, I can't. Uh, I can't teach these assholes. I'm in, the, yeah, I'm in an sorry, elevator. Sorry, I'm stuck in your fucking elevator. For I'll be waiting. Take your time. <laughs> so no, yeah, I like to play with danger. Did you? Now I just heard something. Did you? Did both you watch uh, number one and number two beforehand? So I, I rewatched number one, and then I couldn't find two. 
Like, and and was Saltine in one. Yeah. Yeah, I watched the first one and yeah, I so didn't I just watch plot, the second like, one. Yeah, like I just read the full summary and then they lost me at like when they took the VC Andrews curve. Oh, what is that? What? The incest, baby. Yeah, the, when they went for the incest route. I was like, no, I think I'm, I think I'm yeah. going to tap out here. I'm fine. <laughs> you mean the most uncomfortable boobs of all time? Because I go, she is not 18. Then I looked it up. She just turned 18. I go, you are so gross, Italian director. Oh, so gross. Right? It was, ugh. Yeah. Everything about that one feels icky. That's disgusting. I wonder if like uh, if a pushback from that, because that movie's always kind of generally thought of as like gross and icky. I wonder if that's why we get a PG third one. I always wondered why this one was mm. PG. It was for PG too? I think so because it was a TV movie. So I think so. But mm. then there are after that. So I, I yeah, I don't, I wonder if like they, they heard that two was so gross and they were like, all right, we got to tone down this next one. <laughs> oh yeah. Vestron gets in, watches it and they're like, wait a minute. She just turned 18, you showed her boobs, and she had to sleep with her brother. All right, we're doing a PG movie. I can't do this. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, this movie, it, did, it lost money. PG probably wasn't the way to go. $6 million budget, 6.3 domestic box office. So I guess the 3D, uh, the, the little gimmick there didn't work for this. Yeah, I, I think the PG brings in, though, like a, a tone... That feels kind of amblin'y. It feels kind of poltergeisty. It feels kind of Ghostbusters-y. Uh, a little bit. I mean, obviously, it's not going to reach the heights of any of those things, but it, it does have that vibe that feels like this sort of family-ish horror, you know, early gateway horror kind of vibe that Amblin stuff has. I, I felt that when I was watching it this time. Yeah, I, I and it almost kind of made it boring for me. Like, I was just like, hmm. Huh. You know, like, I don't know. I was underwhelmed with this one. <laughs> oh, there's a big gap for me, too, where I was like, okay, you know, they're not believing someone who's getting haunted by a ghost. So I guess at the beginning, we have two journalists. Uh, we don't know they're journalists at the time. They go in, they pretend like they lost their daughter. They, uh, you know, kind of like prove that these two older fake psychics are setting people up. And then I guess that ends a contract for your... Uh, that you sign, they're like, oh, you found out you're a fake. You're kicked out of the house. Yeah, that's you a, gotta really yeah. read the fine yeah, lines. Yeah, that breaks the rental yeah. agreement. Yeah, that's in the lease. <laughs> it's like they've walked right out. I'm like, what? Don't you have like a year? <laughs> yeah, you're right. Always read the fine print. <laughs> I don't know, but every contract I'm writing, that's going to be a clause for now on just to be safe. Yeah, like I'm fine with ghosts, but if you're lying to people and it's fake ghosts, yeah. you're out. <laughs> you're out of here. Uh, when you start your uh, whole retail um, giant uh, rental, you know, like you're renting out to people and everything, you make sure you get that in there. That's right. And I will send everyone I know that way. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, and then, you know, the, I, I love how the the fat cat in this Clifford, I think his name is, who's just like, I, Clifford. <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know they were doing this. And then John... Which is like, you know, the leading He's like, man. I didn't know they were doing this. And then if uh, you write the story, make sure you don't mention me in it at all. Because I definitely didn't have anything to do with it. Uh, just in case you thought I might have had something to do with it. I definitely didn't. Like, <laughs> it was like, okay, guy. Okay, guy. <laughs> so clearly you had something to do with this. Uh, <laughs> and he almost fell. First of all, there's a, there's a well into nowhere. Or, or it's just a hole. It's not even a well at that point. And he falls in through the, the wood First of all, if you see wood planks like that, why the fuck are you standing on them if you weigh like 400 pounds? <laughs> I know, I'm cautious with those like white patio chairs. Like those white plastic <laughs> patio chairs. I'm cautious sitting in those. And Fatty ass is just walking over these planks in an already grody rundown, you know, basement. No, you deserved it. You, I, you deserved oh, it. I had down. zero sympathy yeah. for Cliff. <laughs> Cliffy had everything he got, like deserved everything he got. I'm actually impressed that he could pull him out of that well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but then he gets up and he's huffing and he's huffing and puffing and then john and me i do like john's like he's like yeah well maybe i won't push in the story if you sell me this house yeah that the timing on that felt a little <laughs> inappropriate to me <laughs> i mean i'm no business guru but <laughs> yeah was, uh, what were you gonna say man i cut you off sorry i wonder if, if it's tied to the time because i feel like a lot of people were pushing back against like the Amityville horror, like the book, the story, the movie being like, it's fake, it's fake, it's fake. And I feel like the third movie is kind of like a response to that. It's like, okay, 
there was fake stuff but now we're gonna try to get the demon out <laughs> like i feel like it's a it, it was in the public consciousness when they were seeing these movies that there were so many things disproving so many things from the first movie and stuff like that coming out in the early 80s yeah because the let's family you can say is full of shit that's fine <laughs> i know a lot of people say it is including james brolin who starred in the first one <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm a skeptic. I never really called them bullshit because I just didn't care. I was like, whatever, you got a book out of it. Good for you. Yeah. But I, yeah, I wonder if the movie, this movie, they made that conscious decision when they were writing the script. They were like, all right, we got to address like the the grifters here. We got to address the, the fake stuff. No, you might be absolutely right. That's probably why a skeptic led this film is because of all the skeptics out there of the Lutz family. Right. Wow, Matt, you just, you just blew my mind a little bit. More Sorry. than the 3D, <laughs> which is hard to do. Yeah, yeah no, I, that's a good call. Yeah, who do you think you are coming on this podcast with good calls? <laughs> I'll leave. I'll see myself out. Yeah. <laughs> we only accept stupidity. <laughs> yeah, you bring uh, us on. I thank you not to do that again. Yeah, man. seriously. <laughs> I'm going to have to replace you as co-host. <laughs> it is funny he buys the house, and, you know, the ex-wife. Which, okay, can someone explain to me, is he living with his ex-wife? I have so many questions about the nature of their relationship. Are they are they banging? <laughs> no, see, I took it from what... Okay, I don't... I think they're in the process of. Because when he's packing his stuff, she's like, you know, you keep talking about divorce and you haven't... Like, they haven't gone through with it. I, it sounds like they are... In, they have, like, they finally have come to the, to the decision of, we're getting a divorce. So that's why he's packing his stuff, and that's why he's peacing out, because no they have decided Laura, to do it. No wonder Lori Laughlin was such a rebel. That can't be easy on her. No. You feel bad for Aunt Becky, because her parents are just, like, at odds with each other. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm with Marissa. I think they're still touching no-nos. Yeah, I think so, too. I mean, that's how I read it, personally. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the mother was like, are you sure you want to go? Like, she didn't want him to leave. I was like, wait, are you sure you want a divorce? What is this? I I don't know. I, I got the opposite vibe from her. I was I thought that uh, the wife didn't fucking want anything to do with him anymore. <laughs> like, didn't want to touch him, didn't want to look. I thought she hated him in this. Oh, man, I did not get that. I, yeah, I that mean, was just like a vibe I got. She I hated the house. Funny. Oh, for sure. Yeah. She hated his, like, believing, but yeah, no, I didn't get that either. That's so funny. I am a hopeless romantic, though, when it comes to my couples in horror movies. Well, right when she said, are you sure you want to go? I was like, wait, are you sure you want him to go? <laughs> and then when Whitney Houston started playing, I was like, I'm here for them. No, you know what? Because he called her bluff. And now she's backtracking. Like, you can only imagine there was an argument of, like, you know, if you want to go, then go. Well, fine, then fine. I'll yeah, fine and go. Yeah. And then, yeah. And then when he actually called her bluff and bought the fucking house and is packing up his stuff, then it's suddenly like, well, are you sure you want to go? Like, like, you sure you want to do this? It's like a delightful game of chicken. Yeah. And I think yeah. anybody who's ever been in a long enough relationship knows that moment where you're like, fuck it, you won't. Yeah. Like, you know, <laughs> I, I get it. And I found that to be something fun to play with in my head while I was bored with the rest of the film. Well, maybe there? she's having seller's remorse because she She's got a lot of high shelves. She needs someone to reach them. She doesn't have a stepladder. No, that is what the primary mission of a man is in a house. Yeah. Yeah. At least absolutely. in my houses. <laughs> yeah. I do hang out with a lot of short women now. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I, I find that fascinating that Marissa and I got one way. Matt got another. And uh, Jackie, I didn't catch yours. What'd you think? No, I, no, I said that uh, she's pissy because he called her bluff. I think you're kind of on, the, you're on your own. You're like on that fence where you're like, oh, yeah, you didn't see it coming, did you? You didn't think I had the balls. Yeah. Yeah, I bought a notoriously haunted house. Kiss my ass. Yeah, what are you doing you now? Right. It's the biggest <laughs> you won't ever. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. And of all the houses to buy. I think and we all can agree that the mom, the one thing she did hate was him buying a haunted house. <laughs> She's like, my daughter's not going there. And I said, as soon as you said that out loud. You know your daughter's going there. <laughs> oh, yeah. Can't tell her no, because if she tells her no, all she's going to want to do is go in that house. <laughs> and I've always known Meg Ryan was a bad influence on people. Nobody ever listens right? to me. <laughs> America's sweetheart, my ass. Yeah. Kiss my ass. <laughs> like, Come on, let's go check out the well. Let's do a Ouija in the haunted house. <laughs> uh, by the way, a DIY Ouija, which I was like, well, well played. I mean, I, I've never done that. The Ouija board only works. If everybody cooperates and believes. Now, put your finger on the glass. 
everybody. Okay, now we have to agree on a question and concentrate really hard and the spirits will answer us. Oh my God, I feel like there's no, like that's the only way you could get worse than Milton Bradley is to be like, I'm gonna make my own fucking Ouija. Let me fucking pull out one of my armpit hairs and use it for the fucking, like there's nothing good is gonna come out of a Ouija, let alone. (laughs) Oh, that's not how you guys make your homemade Ouija? (laughs) I can't get the visual of you, (laughs) like having one long armpit hair. It's a lot of it's a lot of work. Every it's a lot of grooming. Um, just like she, just, she yeah, she just grows just that fun. one because yep. she just knows fun. in like a couple months. I'm like, gonna have to make I'm my Ouija, Ouija man. I'm gonna Ouija. I can't pluck you yet, fun. <laughs> can't pluck you yet. We are Ouija next month though. So yeah, so no, but like that's you are like it's such a bad idea at, to to begin with to play with the Ouija, but then to make it yourself, you deserve everything you get, Meg Ryan. <laughs> I, I will confess, when I was with the Ouija board, I was the one moving it. Always, always. I was a oh, fucking asshole. Well, you gotta be that guy, man. Because <laughs> I thought it was stupid. That's Jackie. Jackie yeah, just fuck me. with me. <laughs> yeah, pretty that's much. Why I don't play with. Well, first of all, I won't play with one. Yeah, I'm too she scared. Won't. She she has she has said that we should do one, like as like a Jersey Ghouls thing. But the rules are: it can't be in her house, correct? And it can't be at a graveyard. I, I misspelled the word once while Ouijing, uh, like. And <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So at the end of it, when it was done, because I'm pretty sure my uh, cousin Brad was doing the same thing. At the end, I go, oh, my God, the ghost is warning us and he can't spell. <laughs> it's an illiterate ghost. A-holes. They're the worst kind. You got, you know what? One day you're going to get your comeuppance from a, from a Ouija board, homemade or otherwise. Yeah, paper yeah. cut. <laughs> big old, a big old paper cut from a Ouija board. Well, you know, those demons and armpit hairs. They're, they're rough. <laughs> Don't mess with the bed. The dead boy. <laughs> spooky powers. Yes. <laughs> All right. So we've solved that don't tell your teenage daughter where to go and Correct. that uh, Meg Ryan is a horrible witch of a human being. That's, uh... <laughs> yeah, but and how to make your own homemade yeah. <laughs> a Ouija board. So you're welcome. <laughs> All right. And remember to be kind, rewind. That's done this week. <laughs> uh, Matt, take control of this week. <laughs> It's just burning train. Where are we going next? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> the, the drowning of the daughter? Uh, yeah. Uh, just clean erasing her from this movie. What's up with that? Uh, she she drowns, and then they were like, okay, she's dead. You know what was really uncomfortable? And Marissa, you're the only one with a child here. And, mm-hmm. you know, a daughter. So. Yeah. Man, when her daughter walks in and then she sees, you know, that the, you know, the father knows, hey, your daughter's, our daughter's dead. Right. And then she's like, no, no, I'm good. I'm going to just, uh, she's going to need this uh, shirt here iron when she comes back. I was like, yeah. this is so uncomfortable. And it's, I got to be honest, it's a hundred percent accurate. Like I, I fully recognize that if something, God forbid, happened to one of my daughters, I would be batshit crazy. Like, you would walk in and I would full... Like, Jackie knows that she would walk in and I'd be like, hey, girl, like, talking to the wall. Yeah. So it's like, I, I I was so there for the mom in that moment. Like, I was like, I get it. 100%. Yeah, just complete denial. Which I thought that scene was actually kind of like... That, that like, whole little plot line with the mom kind of kind of worked on me a little bit. Even my grinchy heart grew. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I have to agree with Matt because it's just like, well, she she fell in the water. And instantly died <laughs> in done. the water. Yep. Like, they give no explanation. It's just Why no, she couldn't swim. Yeah, or, she just yeah. fell in and died instantly. Aww. Yeah, and I thought because it had, like, that that kind of, like, Amblin vibe early on that, like, the whole thing was going to be, well, they're going to get the daughter out of the well. That's what they're going to do. Nope. They're going to get a demon out of the well, but that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here for a 1980s well plot Oh, line. dude, I love that. At one point, I think it was when... It may, you know, I'm trying to think what, what the guy was looking at, if he was looking in the well or if he was looking at something else, but real quick, there was this like little flash of a demon face. It's like this, it was like this little tiny flash of a demon face. And, um, it, I had to laugh cause do you remember mad balls? Mm, yeah. No. Okay. Yeah. It looked the demon face. I swear oh, to like God. Yeah, yeah. I swear to God. It was just, it was mad, ball. it was a mad ball. That's what they used to the demon in this movie. Cause that's all I saw. So then the rest of the movie, I was just looking for mad balls. It does have a, the, the demon does have a big squishy head when yeah. you do finally get him revealed. So I don't, I don't, uh, I don't blame you for thinking that. Cause absolutely. It looks like that. 
Balls pop out of the hot tub from hell. That's the end of this movie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and the, the scientist, which uh, uh, the actor's name. Robert Joy. Again. Yeah, Robert Amazing Joy. Amazing character actor. Yeah, Robert he is. Joy. Mm-hmm. I remember him. I mean, I think most people from this podcast are probably know him from, what is it, uh, Land of the Dead? Yeah, Land of the Dead or CSI, probably, if you aren't a horror person. Isn't he in one of the CSIs? Sure. I don't know. I've no, actually, him. I think that's where I know him from. It's It's CSI or Criminal Minds or one of those crime drama shows. That's actually where I recognized him from. Yeah, he's like a doctor or a medical professional in, in one of those shows. Yeah, and I that's, yeah, I feel like that's where normies, too, probably know him from. But yeah, Land of the Dead, for sure. He's pretty memorable in it. His makeup at the end of this, when he falls in the well, is pretty similar to his makeup in Land of the Dead. Mm-hmm. I'm like, is it the same character? <laughs> yeah, oh, good point. Yeah, except, <laughs> except he didn't go down. Well, he returns from the well, and then he's in, you know, a zombie movie. That's kind exactly. of like, yeah, sure. I think that works out that, sh- that math checks out <laughs> uh we did forget about the friend who dies and she i mean her her ride through this film kind of sucks because she immediately tells john what was her name melania melanie melanie <laughs> only melania my trump melania. yeah <laughs> Uh, Melania Trump, yes, uh, she's she's dead. Sorry, we lost her tragically in a 3D ghost story. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it is Melania, yeah. I don't know why I said Melania, because Trump's everywhere. Can't fucking escape that asshole. <laughs> he is the demon at the other bottom of the well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, you could cut that out. I can't help myself. Oh, we don't cut that shit out. In <laughs> <Yeah. Long Jones. laughs> um, she gets into the house, you know, she starts, like, it's super cold, and it almost turns into winter inside the house. But I think the worst of all is when this has to piss off, because it always happens to a female to a male, where she's like, all this stuff happened, and he's like, yeah, sure, you're crazy. You want to talk about it now, Melanie? No. Look, Melanie, I'm your friend. Uh, we're partners. This, this is something that happened in my house. I have a right to know what happened. The the lights went out. It was uh, fuses or something. John, it was the most horrible thing that has ever happened to me. The worst nightmare, the, the worst nightmare doesn't even come close. And I will never go into that house again. Never. Melanie, when I got there, the lights were fine. The fuses... I don't care. I don't want to hear about it, John. I don't want another one of your rational explanations. I know what I experienced, and I'm not crazy. Like, that always, like, oh, that's got to drive women nuts. I, it yeah. absolutely did. Yeah. Although, one of my notes is, I like that she kept standing her ground. And she even went, like, you need to believe me. I'm not crazy. Yeah, like, you don't need to mansplain a haunting to me. Like, I know what I saw. <laughs> I'm not crazy. So I did like that she was standing her ground with him. But yeah, like, it was just typical... You know, it's probably her time of the yeah. month. And yeah. she a little, She's a hysterical you know. broad. Yeah, sure. absolutely. Right. And, She's and got nothing... blood coming out of her eyes <laughs> or whatever. Yeah. I don't trust anything that bleeds for seven days. It's <laughs> um, no, it's true. It's so fucking misogynistic and problematic. But the one thing that brings me solace in a, in a haunted house film, at least, is knowing as many skeptic, skeptics as I do. Like, if Jackie and I were hanging out in a haunted house and I came out and gave her that spiel, she'd be like, fuck off. Like, you know, put the pot down, Marissa. Like, <laughs> she wouldn't believe me either. So, like, really... No, I, I wouldn't believe you, but I would, you know, put the colander on my head and I would go out with you. you and would. we'd go you out fighting. You would at I least... Would. I would humor you. her and humor I would go me, out fighting. Humor me, patronize me, potato, potato. Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I'm the skeptic who's more like, yeah, I believe that you believe that you saw that. Which is maybe even worse. <laughs> yes, and that's like, that's kind of like why I like cult stuff is because like they, what they can convince themselves of. And that's more powerful than the actual ghost. And like if someone is convinced that shit's happening, it's it, it's happening to them. I mean, yeah. their mind's that powerful. And so, I, yeah, I, I you know, I would put on the tin foil. Oh, thanks, yeah. guys. Yeah. That's the aliens, isn't it? All right, fine. The colander. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come with me. Put put the spaghetti colander yeah, on your head. Of course, the Italian from New Jersey says she's <laughs> going to put a spaghetti colander on her head and protect herself. Hey, oh, hey. 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 <laughs> I'll bring the toasted ravioli. I'm from St. Louis. <laughs> 
<laughs> we got the French, German, Italian connection. We're just a, a lot of people still defend the South. It's a fucked up state, but I love it. Uh, yeah, so it sucks that she never is believed, but you know, uh, it's it's a skeptical movie, but it pays off at the end where shit goes insane. Before, before we get off Melanie here, uh, didn't anybody else get the vibe that he hooked up with Melanie and that's the reason why his marriage is falling apart like they don't explicitly say it but i'm like yeah that's what happened oh yeah no Shit. she's been down yeah i i got that vibe that like you know professionally they work well together but i think that there's definitely like they hooked up and maybe he kind of backed off and she's into it and he's not as into it anymore but she just kind of wants to keep being around to remind him that like hey i'm still here yeah i think they're i think they're friends and colleagues and they work well together and i think they like yeah totally hooked up once and now uh that ruined his marriage but now they're still working together because they still work well together it's your friend who is always like friends with their exes and you just don't understand it that's what i got because he's he's, he's sticking around with his ex-wife he didn't move into a shitty like motel or anything just to get away so how much do you really hate her i'm sure you don't want to be with her and it's the same thing. Now you're still working with someone you possibly hooked up with. Dude, you just keep putting yourself in bad situations. <laughs> and now he's buying a fucking haunted house. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he makes a lot of bad choices in retrospect. Um, no, see, for me, that was like one of the most unbelievable plot lines. Like, forget the demon in the well, forget the haunted house. To me, I refuse to believe that any woman would still live with her husband if they were contemplating divorce, if he was still hanging out with the jinky bank. There's yeah. no way. So for me, I called bullshit on that. That's why I don't think I read it that way. Because I was like, no woman would let, if, like, on the brink of a divorce would be like, yeah, you go hang out with the girl you banged behind my back. Like, I would kill my husband and bury him in the backyard at another haunted body. To the no, not the backyard. That's the first place they go. <laughs> not in the haunted house, they don't. <laughs> well, because the haunted house would kill them, too. That's right. Yeah. And then I'd torture him as a ghost, too. That'll fix him. <laughs> I never realized that Amityville 3D had such like a love triangle going on. <laughs> no, me neither. It's got a lot of levels. I just thought it was all 3D. Who knew it was so yeah. nuanced? You were right. <laughs> it's like there's so many dimensions. Almost oh! like there's three of them. She's here all night, y'all. Tip your waiter. <laughs> $10 to get in, $5 for the drink. Two drink minimum. I was going to say 20 drink minimum, but if you're with us. <laughs> Yeah, uh, and then, you know, the the whole paranormal... I don't know what this Dr. Elliot West does, honestly. I, I, at first, I thought he was a sleep doctor, but then he's into paranormal shit. So he's a par They say at the beginning, when he goes in the in the house with them, he's a paranormal investigator guy. They yeah, say like kind it. of parapsychologist, kind of Peter Bankman style. Right, a.k.a. he's not a real doctor. I must have refilled my martini at that time. <laughs> I was drinking to get through these. No, that's not true. I'm going to drink to get through the fourth one. Uh, no. <laughs> I, w I was stoned during the fourth one. So that... <laughs> the truth shall set you free. Yes. But I was so sober during this one. <laughs> so didn't someone bring up that there's like a real like, it just kind of drags at one point somewhere in the middle? Oh, yeah. I think so. Yeah. Once the doctor comes into this and you get all the nerds into the house doing their whole like, I'll see the ghosts are here because this reading does this. And I was like, oh, okay. 80s. They're like, computers solve everything. It was so weird, too. Like, it felt like that scene should have been cool, but it was so painful. See, that part I didn't mind as much. It was when Aunt Becky came back as that, like, little purple undulating. Oh, I was here for Little it. gooey. <laughs> whatever, you know, reflection she was. That's where it was kind of like, that's, that's where it kind of got like a little, okay, we're going to follow her. Slowly follow her. Keep following her. Now we're gonna okay. We're gonna go down the stairs now with her. Go around the corner, through the door, down the stairs again. Cause it, so yeah, that one kind of where it was like we literally could have kind of edited that a little bit differently. And okay, we know she's going to the well. The hot tub to hell is where all the action's gonna happen at the end. And then the doctor sacrifices himself for you know no reason. Susan, no, it's Susan. Hold her, John. Susan. Don't let her get any closer. Hi. Susan, let me go! We gotta bring out the source. We gotta force it out. I've gotta confront it. Please, darling, you can't. No, it's Susan. Come out.
you know, to me, like, there was just, like, a strange thing. Why are you sacrificing yourself for this guy's daughter? Like, it's not like, like, are you a friend of the family? Like, I didn't get the connection as to why he was going to sacrifice himself so her spirit could be set free. Like, she's already dead at that point. Hot Tub to Hell equals an 80s band, metal band. I would totally buy their album. Yeah. yeah. I like it. Just, yeah. yeah. Like, I, I, may, I may put that on the band name list. No, I can do that, yeah. <laughs> I, you know, if I was John, I, I wouldn't like, like, okay, I've lost my daughter. I've lost my uh, piece on the side. That's what I'm going to call her. Sorry. Um, <laughs> and now my ex-wife is falling like this orb into the basement. I would kind of be like, no, are you fucking kidding me? Don't go down there. You will Or die. he should be the one to sacrifice himself, you know? Yeah. It's his fault. Oh, good point. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Sure. I don't think that's going to happen. This is written by a man, so fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just get the nerdy doctor to do it, because nerds don't matter. That's right. They're just <laughs> nerd time a dozen. Yeah, and then the nerd goes down there and immediately gets his face burnt, and then, you know, taken by a ghoulie, a gremlin, a gooey alien, whatever you want to call it, into a very clean-looking well. May I say that? You know what I'm saying? The <laughs> water's very blue. It was. It was nice. Yeah, it's, I, I feel like therapeutic. It, I mean, other than going to hell... No, but your muscles are going to feel great. That's right. <laughs> oh, at this point, I'd take it. <laughs> yeah, right? Like, it might be an improvement. When the house destruction started to happen, one of my favorite parts, like, the moment of comic relief when all of this madness is happening. Did you notice at one point there was a chick, like, I think she was, like, one of the boom operators for the paranormal team. She got taken out by an entire door. Like, she got literally got hit by a door and sent through a window, and I, yeah. I had to stop the film because I started to laugh so hard. <laughs> You're a terrible human being. <laughs> Dude, the chick took a, took a door to the body and went through a window. I was losing my mind. Yeah, these, these paranormal investigators take a, take a beating here. <laughs> and then they all die. Yeah. Yeah. And they were rolling deep, too, for a paranormal investigation squad. Like, that. I was impressed yeah. with their budget. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what kind of grant they got, but damn. <laughs> I want to work in 1982. Seriously. It must have been way easier to get your master's thesis done then. <laughs> like, Reagan or Jimmy Carter is just throwing money everywhere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah so, so when it starts to explode, I, I do see all the 3D effects they're getting in. And that's when I started to kind of, like, go more towards Jackie's side where, like, they planned this out. This took a lot of work to get all these stunt workers to like get bashed by doors and like shrapnel and everything. But I do like how John and the ex-wife are like stump, you know, they're like somehow like drunkardly getting through this. They're like, oh, dodge that, dodge that. But when the Marlin comes <laughs> at John, I was like, this movie just hit peak 3D. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I could totally see the line. <laughs> I'm tracking. The- awesome. Yeah, awesome. they they definitely did not try to hide the the wire on the marlin on the wall. And like when when it sat and it was shaking and it was shaking, I was like, "Come on, you can do it. You can do it. You can come toward the camera. You can do it." Oh, I loved it. I loved every second of that. Yeah, do you think he actually caught that marlin, or is that one he, he bought? <laughs> I bet he bought it, and that's why the house is truly mad at him. It's his interior decorating decisions. <laughs> the ghosts are like, you know what? If I have to be here. No, not with the pattern on that couch. No. And by the way, he slept on the couch like every night. What is the deal with that? I mean, they were fighting, right? No, no, but he was in his own house. Oh, yeah, yeah, true. Yeah, she didn't live there. She just (laughs) arrived and stayed. He probably didn't have his own bed, and he was just used to sleeping on the couch from the other house. That it was just like, all right, whatever, I'm good here. You think he had a courage to like go to the girl, you know, the the coworker's house one night? Like that would take balls. Wow, that's what I was thinking too. I go, what kind of man is this? I don't know. I couldn't figure out. John's kind of like a weird one to figure out because it looks like he wants to be a dedicated dad, but he's also a complete dick. <laughs> yeah, he's like a nice guy. Like he's like a nice guy, and he like is not like a shitty. Like, uh, you know, like some of the other uh, males we see in the Amityville series here, he's not that shitty, but then like insidiously he is like, you know, he gets his daughter killed. He cheats on his wife, maybe, you know, like he's, he's like, oh, I'm a nice guy, but it's like, "Mm, I don't know. (laughs) I don't know if it's fair to say he gets his daughter killed. I I mean, mean, like he bought the house, but like, you know, she was told not to go. And if you just listen to your parents, you know, you know what I'm saying? I think he's, you're an asshole. 
I think he's a one of those typical like fake nice guys. Like I'm guys, I'm a nice guy. Like I'm even though I'm doing all these things that would speak to the contrary, I'm I'm the nice guy. And there's so many guys like that out there. And I hate to say that, but it's true. Like you're a fake nice guy. Yeah, he's totally he's totally that. I think you're giving him too much credit. Like, I think he's just kind of like bumbling through life and he's making some poor life choices and some shit has gone wrong. But like, I don't think he's smart enough to calculate half that shit. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. I just, I'm not (laughs) sympathetic towards him at all. Yeah, I'm kind of with Jackie on here. This guy reminds me of the complete idiot where you're like, you know, for a guy who's so smart, you make the dumbest fucking choices I've ever seen. (laughs) You're like, why would you cheat on your wife? It's great. You got everything. You got a house. You got a daughter. You got everything. He's just like, well, I didn't really like her anymore. Okay, well, you're a fucking dick, but fine. And then my next question would be like, why are you staying in the house? You can stay in my basement. He's like, well, you know, I kind of like her. I, I would hate every moment of being his friend because he's too stupid to know how dumb he is. Yeah. Like, what could possibly go wrong? What could, po- you know, what, what, what's the worst that could happen, right? <laughs> yeah. And then could you imagine being his friend meeting at a bar? He's like, wait a minute. You bought one of the most haunted houses of all time? Why? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Because you know your wife's going to hate it. You, you know, like, you just, like, keep making fucking dumb decisions. You're going to end up dying in that house. And then he did. Or oh, wait, no. Did he survive? <laughs> he, he survived. survived. He survived, yeah. yeah. Which he and the wife off. survived. But they're, like, the only ones. Yeah, like, half the paranormal team. Oh, the paranormal got team exploded. got wiped out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> got exploded. Yeah. Yeah, so and then that's kind of, like, the confusion of where this lies in the storyline of Amityville. And I love, this is the same thing with, like, Friday the 13th, where these nerds online fight about this and where it is. And I read about it, and then immediately I'm like, who gives a shit, guys? It's Amityville 3D. Yeah. Why are we doing this? <laughs> we really don't have to put that it much energy really into blew, it. <laughs> it. It makes me so delighted to think that there are people who are going to argue the fact that this doesn't, like, in the timeline. Yes, yeah, because the work. house blows up. So it makes no sense of what happens in 4, because the house sure. blows up in 3. Well, maybe it's like a prequel, or maybe it's like in a different but dimension, to live a or life alternate where, reality. To live a life where I care that much about that must be... I mean, I'm jealous. Yeah. Like, I mean, here I am arguing with people online about, you know, like human rights. <laughs> but these people, they know the real problem with society. Yeah. But it, it did make me realize that I have made a poor life choice of my own because I... Just what? I should have, oh. I should have gotten into pyrotechnics. Because you know what? They don't call it arson if you get paid to do it. <laughs> I want to blow some shit up. That explosion was cool. Wow. And like yes, fireworks? Like, I want to set houses on fire and have them explode. Let's do it. See what happens. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> like, I get that they, like, filmed the same explosion from, like, five different angles and kept using the same ones over and over again. Oh, I thought that was stock footage that they paid, it like, It still bucks looks for. so much fun. It looks <laughs> so much fun to blow shit up professionally. Oh, I imagine. Yeah. Especially if you're getting paid for it, you're, like, the shit. Yeah, that is a cool job. That's yeah. fair. Like I said, and it's not arson, and you can't get in trouble. Because <laughs> your boss told you to do it. I would hate to be your spouse because, you know, every party, everyone would be like, hey, uh, uh, Jackie. And your husband would be like, fucking every time, fucking time. And I listen to this <laughs> fucking Poltergeist 3 and, and, and uh, the Amityville 3 story. Fucking <laughs> uh, And, you know, when you're with someone long enough, you've heard their story so much. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm saying that on behalf of my husband because he must be so fucking sick of it. <laughs> uh, at least you get new stories because you're at school and you know, like teenagers, they they just fuck everything up. Oh, it's so true. Yeah, yeah. There's spectacular like messes to watch, but not Ray's. Yeah, no, <laughs> Chad's not. Chad, I don't think Chad's sick of my stories. Chad's just sick of buying band aids because I am forever just hurting myself on stuff. <laughs> so he knows that if like I'm in the kitchen and he hears, ooh. He doesn't even come to me first. He goes to the bathroom first to get the box of Band-Aids, and then he comes in to see what's wrong. Uh, but what if the walls are bleeding like Amityville one day? Like, a <laughs> that's, a lot of, that's a lot of Band-Aids. <laughs> <laughs> I'd probably still get blamed for that. It'd be like, what'd you cut? What'd you do? <laughs> oh, I would get yeah. blamed for that, too. I would get blamed 100% for the walls bleeding. How did you hurt yourself to make the walls bleed? 100% I'd get blamed, yeah. <laughs> All right, with the uh, We Need a Thousand Band-Aids, we're going to end this week and go to the museum. Are we ready? Woo! Yeah. This is the second time I've had to reclaim my property from you. That belongs in a museum. So do you.
This is the part of the show where we go out in the film jungle like Indy and we bring something back to our Amityville wing of the museum. And I'm going to let the guests go first. Jackie, Marissa, what do you got? Mine is, so mentioned earlier about the special effects. I actually really like the big demon that came out of the well at the end. Oh yeah, so I'm gonna I'm gonna give a nod to the special effects, and I'm gonna put the uh, the mad ball alien demon creature from from the well into the museum. Okay, yeah, I thought long and hard about this one, and I'm going to put Lori Loughlin in the museum. Really? And yes, and he, yeah, here's why. And and it, I want to go back to a world where Aunt Becky was just delightful. Yeah. So I'm gonna put 1983 Lori Loughlin in the vault. <laughs> Is that okay with everybody? Like, yeah, yeah. Keep okay. her safe, keep her preserved, that's keep right. her untainted. Yeah, keep her pure. <laughs> like, I'm not sure if that's the spirit of our vault, but I think she, in there, she'll make better life choices than she did for the rest of her life. <laughs> I think you're 100% right. Thank you. Such a cutie. <laughs> what, what went wrong? I don't know. We could have, but we could save her. It's not too yeah. late. <laughs> All right. What is next? You're up. What do you got? Oh, you're going to make me go first. Good for you. You took control. <laughs> I'm gonna go with the beginning. I really liked it. it. It tricked me, and that doesn't happen a lot in films. Cause you know we we've all watched so many fucking movies, and especially horror films, where you're like, oh, you kind of start to figure out what kind of tropes and typical storylines they're gonna use. And this one kind of like threw me for a loop. I was like, oh, they're gonna be skeptics. I love it. I mean, sure, there was a lot of like downtime in this, but I like the first part. So I guess I'm going to put in the script, the first 10 pages of the script. I don't know. Oh, okay. I'm going to go ahead and just put like the, well, maybe I'll just take the one thing that I, I like out of it. I was going to say uh, the effects because I like the demon and stuff too, but I also like the, the orb. So I'll put the orb Ooh. in there, that glowing little purple orb thing. It's stupid, but it looks cool, visual. It, I like that it's 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 there. You know, there is like a... It's not CGI yet, so there is some realness kind of to it, even though it's like superimposed in there and everything. Um, so I, I like like the orb. I like all the effects in general. And then just to b pare it down all the way to it, like the the whole thing here. I, I like this movie. I don't know why. I think it's so dorky. I think it's boring. But for some reason, I, I like it. I enjoy it. I, I think it's like just a just a goofy stupid early 80s thing and i think like the yeah the effects are super fun and like i uh and, and yeah the cast is fun too like it's fun to see meg ryan and Lori laughlin and stuff in here candy clark but like yeah it's just a it's a it's a stupid 3d thing but i i don't know it's charming to me no i agree i mean i had said it in our in our chat that you know the first one definitely has its place in horror history you can't take away from how good, who is it, Margot Kidder and, you know, PW, how good they did. PW. <laughs> no, but it, honestly, if I'm at the video store and I have a choice between the Amityville Horror and Amityville 3, Amityville 3 is so much more fun. Holy oh, shit. Yeah. Wow. So yeah. much more fun. Yeah, I'm picking 3 over 1. I can't believe you just said yeah. that. Yeah, absolutely. It. It's so much more fun. I get it. If you're having a Halloween party and you're going to throw one on, you're going to put 3 on. It's goofy. Yeah. It's it's got and it's got like the weird visuals of like the demon and like the, the orbs and stuff like that. Like it, I think it's I don't think it's better. I just think it's like it. There's something about it. It's like you you more that's more of a party thing than the fr first one's a serious classic. This yeah. one's like fun. Absolutely. This one's so slow though. No, I don't think it's slow. Ooh. See, I also like all the gimmicky 3D stuff, and you don't. Oh, so, see, I just was annoyed. Like by I it, ca yeah. like every scene that happened, I was almost like looking around to see what like what was going to be the gimmick in this scene. What are they going to put in the camera in this scene? Hmm. No, I, I'm more with Marissa. I was just like, whoa, what? Really? <laughs> it means you. <laughs> so I guess we're going to be on the same side here. Skeptic and uh, and believer, scarier of everything person are teaming up to uh, be like, what you talking about, Jaggy? <laughs> I, right. I didn't say it was better. I just said if I've got the choice between the two. I mean, come on. At this point in our lives, Marissa, at least, you can't be surprised that I'm going to pick Amityville 3D over watching Amityville. No, nothing surprises me with you anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I could respect that you're more entertained by one and you choose that. And I mean, that happens all the time because I can't tell you how many times I've watched Freddy Six over the first one. And I know Nightmare on Elm Street is far superior, but number yeah. six pains me like no other. And that's also 3D, so it's it's amazing yeah, that I there you go. 
walk that choice out of the air. Six so. is pretty fun. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Freddie Sperm's amazing. Come on, agree. I can agree <laughs> yeah. with that. I think we can all agree on that. All right, that will wrap it up. Before we leave, though, Ghouls, explain to the listeners where they can catch in, what you're all about. Jersey Ghouls are, uh, it's me and Marissa, and we kind of take the feminist fangirl approach to horror films, books, comics, culture, anything homemade within the Ouija genre. Boards, all yeah, of homemade Ouija boards, we have our take on that. Uh, but yeah, basically it's us. A lot of times we'll bring a guest on. We love to promote our friends. We love to promote independent horror and you can find us at jerseyghouls.com. You can also find us on your favorite podcasting app or you just search Jersey Ghouls on social media. You can find us, join the group on Facebook. There's always a lot of fun banter and chatter on there. You can follow us on Twitter and Instagram and like I said, all the socials. All right. Awesome. Yeah, I love listening to you too. You guys, uh, you're kind of like my Monday podcast. Oh, sweet. Aww. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I'll take that. Thank you, man. You come out on Sunday night. Sometimes I catch yeah. you on Sunday night, honestly. And then, but there's mostly it's Monday morning after I get through my stand ups at work, and I'm like, well, let's pop on the goose. Yay. Oh, yeah, I probably should have mentioned we release an episode every other Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I love the, uh, the banter between, you know, Marissa, who's more taking, like, ah, this is why we should look at it through a feminist, uh, you know, <laughs> lens. And then Jackie's like, yeah, but this is fucking badass. And, uh, yeah. and then you guys argue. <laughs> <Love> <laughs> Yeah, we do. Yeah, I think it's kind of obvious who the feminist and who the fangirl is. So, like I said, we, you know, we generally, Marissa does her absolute best to bring some academic views and some actual social issue to our show. Right. And, and then Jackie, like, after I, in one breath, we'll talk about how demeaning, you know, it is to women in certain ways. She'll be like, but her tits, though, they were so good. And yeah. then it just works somehow. Yeah, I'm, I'm usually good to interrupt her actual thought with a dick and fart joke. So, you know. Come visit us at jerseyghouls.com. Yeah, I can never figure out if you're more of a size girl or if you're more of a shape girl when it comes to boobs. I can never figure it out. I've thought long and hard about this. She's a shape girl. I bet girl. you have, see. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Um, yeah, I'm, yeah, no, I'm a shape, shape girl. girl. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that's fair I mean, enough, yeah. What kind of best friend would I be if I didn't know that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then we wonder why so many people assume that we're together, together, together. Together, together. <laughs> Which we don't correct. It's a debate that will go on forever. <laughs> it would truly will. Thanks for having us on, you guys. This was a lot of fun. Don't turn off yet. I mean, because they're coming back next week. <laughs> oh, stop. Two, two weeks in a row. Two almost. weeks oh, in a row. Goodness, you guys are so brave. <laughs> oh, no. This is fantastic. I love it. Uh, this is going to make for a very energetic fourth episode. I can already tell. Oh, I'm ready. <laughs> so come back next week when we take on Amityville for... The evil returns, or as I like to call it, when the house says, fuck it, I'm out. <laughs> uh, so remember to be kind. And rewind.